Nature has blessed our state with great riches, vast timberlands, prairies and plains, rich in wheat, cotton and grass. And below the surface, oil, for which Oklahoma has known the world over. And also beneath the surface, coal. Just a few miles east of Henrietta is the mine of the Star Coal Company, the largest operating coal mine in Oklahoma. A walk around the grubby activity going up because the real business of mining goes on underground. And we're going to see how these Oklahomans meet the challenge of nature and remove the coal from the mine. It's six in the morning, and before going into the mine, the miners get their headlamps. In the old days, fish oil lamps were used, then carbide lamps. But now, wet cell batteries attached to the belt are the safe source of current. It's work that takes men, men like Tom Morgan and Andrew Patterson and his son. And now we're going to go in the mine and see how the coal is taken out. It's a two and a half mile ride in on the train, then another half mile ride on the conveyor belt, and then a good crawl. The last thing you see before entering the mine is this beautiful waterfall to the entrance. And now you're in the mine. The coal in the this machine puts about a seven a cut into the face, just above one. After the coal is loosened, the miners shovel it onto the first of the conveyor light to take the pictures. Because this is coal, jet black, as only coal can be. All the coal in the vein is removed. The floor is chipped to the bottom level of the vein. And the roof is evened out. Along with removing the top coal, the miners test the strength and safety of the roof in this way. And as the coal is removed, the miners timber up. This is but one of the many safety precautions. The mine is working three shifts. Two of the shifts remove the coal. The third shift spends its hours hauling in timbers and checking equipment. On every shift, a special white powder is spread throughout the mining area to eliminate the explosive factor from dust. Because of such precautions, the men work in safety as they put the, the coal streams to mine train from the various rooms much the same as smaller streams flow into larger ones, until a river of coal proceeds on the belt conveyor. belt ends where the narrow gauge railroad begins, two and a half miles from daylight. Each car holds one and a third tons of coal, and there are about 25 cars to each train. Four different trains operate in and out of the mine. How do these trains keep from tangling up with each other in the miles of coal black passageways? Well, by telephone. Here again, the telephone proves its versatility and universal service. It provides the vital communication link between the crew on top and the miners working two and a half miles into the bowels of the earth. It keeps the train spaced and provides a service which helps the miners take more coal out with greater safety. And when the train is loaded, it starts toward the top. When you ride out toward daylight, your eyes have a lot of adjusting to do and you get the feeling you're leaving one world and entering another. In fact, our cameraman said that he had the strange thought that he now knew how Alice felt when leaving Wonderland. And for the first time in untold millions of years, our trainload of coal is seeing daylight. The next step is to separate the coal as to grade and so forth. So the cars proceed to the tipple, where they are relieved of their ton and a third of coal. In the tipple, the coal is separated one or two ways. This way is screening. It is shuffled back and forth across a series of screens, each with different sized holes. The lumps fall through the holes on the conveyor belt that carry the coal to the cars. The second process of separation is done through the crusher, 
which prepares the coal for stoker operation. After being crushed, the coal is given a fine oil spray to eliminate dust. The coal is graded and loaded on railroad coal cars, which in many cases are routed to their destination by telephone. In the coal industry, the telephone contributes an important share to the smooth handling of the whole mining job, from the buying of supplies and equipment to the final marketing of the coal. In many cases, cars actually en route are switched to different cities where a need for more coal has developed. This takes fast work, so much of it must be done by telephone and teletypewriter. The coal from this Oklahoma mine travels as far north as the Dakotas and as far south as Houston. Thus, Oklahoma's rich natural resources are again proving instrumental in adding to the industrial prosperity of the state. But just as important as the resources themselves are the men who make them available. Because the furnaces of industry have hungry mouths, it takes a lot of hard work to supply them. Train load after train load comes forth from the mine, each train load containing from 35 to 40 tons of coal. And as one shift of miners leave the mine and run to their cars to go home, another shift is going into the mine to continue the mining activity. The work that these men do is for the most part unsung and unheralded. You will probably never have the opportunity of standing beside them and watching them at their jobs. That's why the folks at the telephone company are proud to give you this opportunity to see what goes on inside a coal mine. And as activity proceeds at a fast clip underground, you notice the small waterfall at the mine entrance. It serves as a reminder of the wonders of the world we live in, of how nature deposits her wealth drop by drop over millions of years, of how we know so little about the wonders of this state we live in.